Okay, so we're going to talk about blocking. Blocking is one of the first things that you think about when you're thinking about uh, learning the skills of a director. Blocking is important because it enables the audience to see the story unfold as a series of pictures, and the pictures create a kind of power that creates a foundation for the story. So the story can be perceived uh, clearly and effectively. There are many aspects of blocking that are very important uh, when it comes to delivering the story in the most effective means possible. So uh, let's get started with our discussion of blocking. Let's start by um, stating a, a rule, so to speak. Um, the rule is do not allow the actors to decide when and where they will go. This is your job. You can use their input if it works for your vision and you can ask them to improvise movement uh, at times for inspiration or to help them own the space, but do not allow them to make the final choices. Why? Because they can't see themselves and they're not the director. It's your job to have the vision for the play. You create the world uh, and that means you create every stage picture that happens. Throughout the entire production, there will be hundreds or thousands of pictures, individual pictures, and you create all of them. Now, there are several powers, let's call them, of, of blocking, and these powers come from the world of visual art and photography and filmmaking, uh, and of course, uh, theater. And we can see them uh, at work in some of the images that I will be sharing with you in this lecture. Uh, the first power that I want to talk about is the power of geometry. And for that, I want to specifically uh, talk about triangles, diagonals, and arcs. Now, triangles, uh, as you see in these pictures, create visual interest. Uh, and they also create compositional balance and visual power. Uh, these are, in art, uh, we see them quite a bit because it works. Uh, it is based on a kind of uh, mathematical understanding of, of beauty, uh, especially in terms of the balance. But we'll also see that when we look at the world, our brain uh, tends to categorize things uh, into various shapes. And the triangle is one of the shapes that we see in nature quite a bit. Another uh, shape or line that we see are diagonal, diagonals. Uh, diagonals create power dynamics and especially create a perception of depth um, and it also helps guide the audience uh, in terms of where to look. So it creates for the, for the director, it creates a kind of uh, pointer for uh, focus. And it is very important to uh, be able to draw the eye of the audience to a specific area of the stage at a specific time. That kind of manipulation is extremely important for the stage. In filmmaking, of course, you use the camera. Uh, in visual art, of course, you have the canvas, and you limit everything uh, to what the only thing you want the audience to see, and that's all you show them. Well, in the theater, they can be looking around all over the place, uh, including all over the theater. Uh, so you want to use lines like uh, diagonals, uh, to create uh, a way to focus their, their eyes on the thing that matters for the story in a given moment. Another shape uh, or line 
is an arc. Arcs uh, tend to create symmetry, also balance, and a kind of epic inclusion. Uh, this is, the arc is, is normally used uh, only in the cases of um, large casts. Uh, and you, you see the arc employed quite a bit in, in large productions, musical theater, that kind of thing, where you have um, a line of people that, that is uh, stretching across the stage and it's usually in the shape of an arc because the worst thing you can do uh, is to have a flat line on a single plane uh, of the stage because that simply uh, is not very interesting and uh, people tend to avoid that, directors, good directors, tend to avoid that whenever possible. And most of the time, it's possible all of the time. The next power that I want to talk about is the power of proxemics. And uh, proxemics uh, deals with uh, the spatial relationships. Um, and in our case, we're talking about the spatial relationships between characters. Now, what does it do? Um, well, the spatial relationships are how close or how far away a character stands from another character can reveal tensions uh, within that uh, relationship. It can reveal intimacy or the lack of intimacy. It can reveal status. Um, that uh, kind of connection, physical connection, or the space between people are very important in telling parts of the story. And so you should pay quite a bit of attention to the proxemics of people and also proxemics of objects or furniture um, because you can use objects and use furniture as extensions of the body. And that sometimes uh, is necessary if you want to add power to uh, a character or allow a character to, to use the furniture in a way that helps them get what they want. Uh, and sometimes you use um, an obstacle, um, use, a, use a piece of furniture as an obstacle, something that is standing in the way of that makes the character kind of work against uh, in order to get what they want. And any kind of obstacle, whether emotional or physical, it's important to highlight as much as possible in a story so that the audience can, again, see the story as it unfolds. Uh, another aspect of proxemics is levels. Um, when you're working with actors, you want to try to create as many levels as possible. This just adds to visual interest. It creates depth. Uh, it can create a visual hierarchy where there's you know, status suggested. It can also create focus and it also then creates diagonals, and triangles, and other kinds of forms uh, and lines. The next power that I want to talk about is the power of beauty. Um, some of the classic conditions of beauty are color, shape, pattern, line, texture, visual weight, balance, scale, proximity, movement. So let's talk about color. Every choice that you make, every color choice you make, should be in keeping with the given circumstances of the play. And all of these choices, uh, you should always think about what is helping me tell the story that I need to tell. And color choices are extremely important uh, as you're working with uh, scenic designers, costume designers, lighting designers, um, because color can help you tell the story. It can also help you in, in some ways to illustrate uh, your chief operating metaphor, which is something we'll be talking about later. It has to do with the theme or the ideas that you're trying to get across. So color is really important to consider uh, when you're thinking about um, telling the story. And it does have to do with blocking because uh, where there uh, is placement uh, of certain bodies and certain costumes and certain kinds of furniture and walls, all of these things do take uh, color and do reflect a certain kinds of color uh, at certain times to create mood and uh, tension, all the rest. Uh, so it's really important 
to, to think about color even when you're blocking. The other thing uh, that we want to think about in terms of beauty is shape. Uh, you want to use as much variety as possible while keeping an overall eye on uh, a kind of unity. Uh, one of the classic definitions of beauty, in fact, is uh, unity amidst diversity. And you can see that by looking out in nature uh, because you look at something that you might consider a beautiful landscape. And what are you looking at? Well, you're looking at a bunch of different sizes of trees and plants and shrubberies uh, and things like that. And they're all very, very different. And that's, that difference, that, that diversity of, of form and, and color, that creates an overall uh, unity, which we perceive as beauty. And so uh, you want to, as you're creating these stage pictures with, with your blocking, you want to try to create as much shape uh, in, t in the picture as possible. Pattern is also another aspect of beauty and you want to look for ways to see and use patterns to tell the story and to tell your idea. And patterns can be established uh, not only in terms of where actors are standing at a given moment, but also a pattern of movement that can be repeated from time to time or a mannerism or something like that uh, that can be something that people will, the audience will pick up on and remember. And this is this be like a kind of melodic line uh, in a piece of music. That helps an audience also to tell the story of the character or to perceive the story of the character. Line is another uh, condition of beauty. And uh, again, the, the kinds of lines that we were talking about earlier uh, with the uh, diagonals and the triangles and the arcs, uh, this is a part of the overall aspect of how to create a, a beautiful picture. And just as a side note, it's not necessary to have beauty in everything that you do on stage. In fact, um, sometimes you want to to move towards something that is not beautiful at all because the play calls for that. Um, and so you want to think about what, what does it mean? What are the uses or my uses of beauty? Uh, the reason I'm spending some time on that when talking about blocking is because for the most part, uh, you are going to want to create pictures that are compelling to look at. And part of a human response to beauty is that we are compelled to look at it. We want to see something that is beautiful because it is pleasurable. And when you can use it, then you should use it. Uh, otherwise, uh, don't hesitate to, to go the anti-aesthetic route uh, if the story needs that. And there are plenty of realistic plays that, uh, just like real life, need to show the uglier side of things. Um, texture is another aspect of beauty, and you can see that, uh, you can use that in blocking uh, in terms of, you can think of it almost metaphorically, uh, in terms of how the movements are working. Are these rough movements, smooth movements, uh, jolted movements, you know, dance-like movements? These kinds of things create a perception of texture as well, and that's another aspect of beauty. Visual weight uh, should be taken into consideration uh, when judging the look of a moment. Uh, and, this, and what I mean by that is that uh, sometimes you will need a character looming over another character or a character looming over the audience uh, or a, re a character receding away from another character or receding away into a corner of a set. Um, Think about the, the visual weight uh, as a movable and adjustable kind of aspect of your composition because all of these, these things matter to the audience when they're perceiving the story. Uh, there's a, quite a bit of difference uh, between a character standing close to the audience and a character standing way upstage, away from the audience. And that kind of weight perception, they feel if that, that 
body of that actor feels heavier and weightier as it gets closer to the audience and lighter uh, and less significant as it moves away. And that power uh, is there for you to use and to help you tell the story. Balance is another aspect of, of beauty and always work toward creating visual balance uh, or a purposeful imbalance uh, when that is uh, called for by the story. And balance is something that I hope that you'll be able to tell. Uh, it's a bit like composition in, in, in photography, um, knowing uh, the, the visual weight of things again uh, within a frame and how to balance that out so that things feel right. And that's something that you might have to spend some time looking at visual art, photography, and that kind of thing to, to get an idea of what that is if that's not something that you already uh, have an awareness of. Scale, uh, you want to choose the appropriate size of visual stimuli as it relates to the theater space and, and the story and the metaphor. Um, in blocking, you want to be able to uh, use the entire room uh, that is created, or the entire set that is created, and you want that set to be appropriate for the story that you're telling. And this is something that you have to consider as you're considering or working with a scenic designer if you're not doing that work yourself. And you want to make sure that this scenic environment indeed is the right scale for the story that you're telling. Uh, there's, it would, it's very bad to have uh, a giant set uh, in a story that's about being uh, tucked away in a small environment. It, it, it just doesn't work for the audience. They get lost and many times um, the directors will tend to direct the story appropriately while the whole set in the room in the theater sort of echoes around them. And so it's very important to think about scale as you are thinking about creating a ground plan uh, and creating a scenic environment for your story to take place. Uh, proximity, as I mentioned uh, above, is also a part of the, an aspect of beauty and something that you, that you have to be uh, careful about. There are some rules of stage movement that you want to consider uh, as you're making your choices. First rule, use all the space with dynamic patterns. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, you want to incorporate all the, all the areas that are, um, that are a part of the world th that the audience sees in front of them. Don't leave pieces, as I mentioned before, unused. And dynamic patterns, what I mean by that is that um, don't simply use the same crosses each time every few minutes somebody walks from stage right to stage left somebody goes upstage then comes back downstage and it's the same pattern all the time you want to use dynamic patterns uh, again keeping in mind using all of the the patterns that we talked about before the lines the shapes the the levels uh, all of the aspects of beauty, all of those things, when, when all of this is taken together, it's going to create a dynamic pattern. Also, keep in mind that, especially when you're uh, working on your ground plan, or when you're thinking about what your scenic environment is going to be, that you want to create enough sit-down areas uh, that uh, will be appropriate for the size of the cast that you have. In fact, most people go by the rule of having one sit-down area per character in the play, and that usually works out. Uh, just be sure you use all of them if you have them. Don't create a sit-down area without uh, using it. The next rule to think about is motivation. You really have to motivate the movement. Unmotivated movement looks strange, and it looks like stage blocking. And you don't want your audience to think about blocking. You want them to think about the story. And so all of the blocking that you do should be motivated, has to be motivated. Uh, and that can be tricky sometimes because sometimes you can see that your 
characters are just talking and talking and sitting and sitting and you don't know what to do. Um, if that happens, look more carefully at what is going on. Look at, look at the action of the scene much more carefully. And you'll find that many times, oh yeah, this character needs to get up because they feel uncomfortable where they are. Uh, or this character needs to get up because they've, they've got to do something uh, physically. Uh, there are probably lots more movements in the script than you uh, will notice at first glance if the, the playwright hasn't put them in there. Also, use movement to draw focus for the audience so that the audience can be looking at the right place at the right time in terms of the, of the story, and we've talked about that already. Now, it's really important that you rehearse these movements. You're creating all these movements based on all these things that I've been talking about, but rehearse them. Uh, make sure that your actors never improvise the blocking. Uh, I've already mentioned that, but it's worth mentioning again. Always rehearse these blocking movements uh, with the lines so that every time the actress says this line, they're moving where they're supposed to be moving and the way they're supposed to be moving. Uh, it's extremely important um, that you don't allow your actors to sort of begin to uh, improvise or change. You are the only person who can change your blocking uh, because you are the only person that has an overall vision for your story. Someone changing your blocking is like someone drawing the mustache on the Mona Lisa. Uh, this directing is an art form and your art, the part of the art that you are making, your input into this creation uh, is blocking. Uh, that's a large part of it. It's not all of it. Of course, there's many more things and we'll be talking about that later. Um, but this is a significant part of your work of art. These, these pictures that you're creating to tell the story of, of the play are yours. These are, this is your expression of, of the story. And so it's your artwork um, and you're responsible for it. So don't, don't let someone else take over and take that away from you. Otherwise, you don't really need to be there. Um, and so I hope that one thing that you take from this class is the importance of the director and uh, the discipline of the director. And um, I want you to learn all that goes into it. And blocking is a, is a part, it's a significant part of the art. It, again, is not the only part. Uh, we'll see that. We're gonna be going through all the concepts that, that I talked about before uh, in the class and that you've written about already and we're gonna sort of unpack each one of those. Uh, but I want to start with blocking because that's, your, that's going to be one of your first activities to do. As always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me and, and ask if it has to do with blocking or anything else in the class.